Uh, now we transition to our mathematics update. We'll start with uh, Dr. Jennifer Curtis, who again, I, I will tell you, I have um, some of the smartest people working in my division now. We have a lot of smart people in the agency, but we have a lot of smart people in CNI, I'm just telling you. Um, um, so with Dr. Jocelyn's uh, background and experience and standards and instruction, we also have uh, Dr. Curtis's expertise in mathematics, so we are very fortunate to have um, them in leadership positions and, and guiding and facilitating this process. So, Dr. Curtis, I will turn it over to you for our math update. Thank you, Dr. Perkins. Chairman Covey, Vice Chair Collins, Dr. Atkinson, it's a pleasure to be here this afternoon to share both an update on the progress we've made with the high school math revision as well as a proposed K-8 timeline for mathematics standards review. My goals today are to provide updates specific to the math one, two, and three high school review and revision process that include a detail of each step of the process, including our timeline, to outline our potential action steps for the spring and summer, to discuss the role that LEAs play in both the feedback and implementation of any standard revisions, and to answer your questions and solicit your input in the process. That's fine. I also then like to provide a timeline for the K-8 review and revision process. So just a little look at what we've done since the Academic Standards Review Commission submitted their final report in December. Um, I won't review all the feedback cycles just yet, but it became very obvious to us very quickly that high school mathematics needed immediate attention. We heard that loud and clear. So we began to move forward and prepare materials to, I'm not sure. <laughs> we you, went to attachment four. You were in a, attachment four, sir. It's taking a while for some other Okay, I apologize. Would you like me to wait for time? So we began to prepare materials. I'll give you a visual aid while it loads. We took all of the survey comments, focus group comments, <coughs> and a focus group from leaders, as well as our parent community survey, and we assembled them into booklets by standard. This is just one course, Math 1. So we spent some time pulling that data together. We did not analyze it, but we were preparing for a convening of our data review committee in February and March. They met over four days to review every comment that was provided, as well as the entire report of the Academic Standards Review Commission, not just the final report, but the interim report as well, and all of the data, whether it was passed or not passed. And in March and April, we've convened writing groups around Math 1, 2, and 3 using guidance from the review group. We anticipate actually having a draft for high school mathematics revised standards out for public review April 18th through the 26th. This is a very aggressive timeline, but again, we were answering the urgency that we heard from the field as well as the Academic Standards Review Commission. We hope to come back to you to May meeting with a draft and feedback for that draft, and again in June for a vote on whether or not to adopt those revised standards. If you were to adopt them, we would hold regional meetings with district leaders, high school math teachers, to communicate those revisions from June 6th through July 30th. So I'd like to step back and just let you know a little bit about the types of data that this data review committee used for high school math. There are over 3,300 teacher responses, K through math three. 591 of those were high school responses. We had a community survey from January to April of 2015. We did not have the same numbers. We had very low numbers in that survey. But we did have teacher focus groups held in eight regions. Every LEA was represented, and teachers worked together by grade. K2, 3, 5, 6, 8, high school math. 
we also held a leader focus group. These would be math coaches, math district leaders, principals, assistant superintendents who attended a leader session for mathematics. We had over 150 people participate in that. Then, of course, we took the Academic Standards Review Commission report, the final report, as well as the interim report that was submitted. All of that data was compiled for the review committee to use. And I'd like to just pause here for a second. And instead of me explaining what this committee looks like and the things that they did, if you don't mind, I'd like to share uh, Chairman Covey about a 10 minute video. Would that be right? Sure. Thank you for sharing that with us, Dr. Curtis. Uh, I think testimonials are powerful and uh, uh, the one message I think that comes across is that we are listening, we have listened, and these standards are being seriously um, evaluated and changed to meet the needs going forward because as I said at first, you know, there's nothing perfect that we always need to be improving. And one thing is being a member of the commission that there was more focus on math one, two, and three and the need for serious revision there. And, and, and what I gather is we're on that track. We are, and I agree with that. Um, and the department agrees with that. We have um, implemented good standards and now we can make them great. Um, this review committee was very adamant that they be able to share their voices with all of you. And so that's when I went and found a video camera and it was just sort of spontaneous. Um, but they wanted to be here today to tell you how much they appreciated the process. So I'm thankful that you allowed that long video and nobody had to sleep. <laughs> um, so you may not have caught the credits, so I wanted to make sure that you had a chance to see the names and positions as well as districts of everybody who participated in the data review committee. And again, this was just for high school math. So that's included in your attachment. You may have seen these pieces of paper hanging on the wall behind folks as they were talking. And by the way, they were there on a Saturday as well. Um, and they wanted to do that. They wanted to come back and do more work with this. So we truly appreciate their hard work. But we forced them to come to consensus so that they first started with small group consensus by conceptual category. You may know that as algebra or functions, geometry number of quantity, probability, statistics. And then we mixed them up and forced them to come to consensus by course. And then we mixed them up again and said, all right, the whole group has to come to consensus. So it was a very um, lengthy process, but well worth the time. What was the standard for coming to consensus? And what were the So metrics? the process, sure. No, um, the process, the, the metrics said. Could they support? Rigor one we of used them? To, yeah, very good. I'm sorry. You were going to tell me, go ahead. <laughs> well, there were several pieces. Um, I, you know, they, well, I don't want to tell you, you know, it was rigor one of the, I mean, oh, the consideration of that. Absolutely. I mean, I know, Sharon, I've had this discussion. Has it been a few years ago that someone from DPI was standing there saying, I think, back to say, our, our standards are D minus, math standards. D minus, F plus D minus. And I do, I, I, at the end, I mean, I do applaud this process. It's really good. But, but the consensus, need, I, I would hope, would also include the it question. Did. In fact, it permeated every discussion. And I can give you a concrete example of that. There's been a lot of discussion about whether or not trigonometry belongs in math one, two, and three. It was also pointed out by the Academic Standards Review Commission that the trig was not connected over the three courses like they had hoped it would be. So they seriously considered that feedback. And we, we talked about, you know, what happens if you push some of it into the fourth math course? 
What happens if you leave it in Math 2 and Math 3? What happens if you arrange it differently? So they actually came to consensus on each piece of that, and one of the hardest consensus pieces was trig. And we actually left that to the writers with guidance that they should not decrease the rigor of the standards that our legislature, especially the House Committee on Education, expected us to have some of the highest standards in the country. And that was discussed very specifically in this group. Did I answer your question? Yeah, that does. And what's not another part of coming to consensus is to whether that our math sequence would prepare students to go to the university or the community college without having to take remediation Correct. courses. Correct. And so we wanted to make sure that we improved on our current standards and did not decrease rigor, that we can continue to prepare students for colleges and careers, no matter what their choices were. Um, and trade and geometry are extremely important pieces of that. So I hope that was. In terms of the process, we had a, um, just let you know, we had a four-step process where they actually used a visual display of whether or not they could support the decision by standard or, you know, down to, I hate this and I might sabotage it. So some of you may have heard about this before. And I can tell you there were very little threes, if ever. When we got through talking something to death, and again, I was just the facilitator to keep the discussions moving, let me tell you, they could spend an hour on two function standards. Um, they were that dedicated and committed to ensuring that not only are these high standards for our students, but that teachers could accomplish what we were asking them to do. And that was a big concern of this group. If we move things around, will it make more sense to teachers? Will we be able to go ahead and complete all the standards in Math 3 versus Math 2? So they were very committed to this and passionate about it. Um, but I wanted to mention the picture you're looking at is where they started. So each course had a color code associated with it. And then the standards were listed by category. And these were around the, the large conference room we were using. By the end, I wish I had put a picture in this presentation for you, because by the end, they were all different colors. They had moved standards. They had made recommendations. And this was all a result of the feedback that I first showed you in these booklets. So they combed through this to get the common themes, and then they applied it as recommendations and advice for a writing team to do. So right now, we have writing groups working by conceptual category. We have a functions group, an algebra group, and a probability statistics group, as well as a geometry group. They're working across all three courses. They're using the advice and the guidance that came from that data review committee, and they are now applying that. We'll be meeting in Greensboro to finalize those drafts April 14th and 15th, and making sure that the guidance from the data review committee was followed. So here's some of the lenses that came out of the data review and, and given to the writing groups. If you see an asterisk, then it came from or was found in and is aligned to the Academic Standards Review Commission's final report. All standards should be examined and revised for clarity. That was their first priority, and that spoke through in the data that they analyzed. Geometry standards should be moved according to topic and organized in a different way. And what that means is a little bit, Math 2 and Math 3 is going to look a little bit different, but I think it will make a lot of sense to teachers. We'll maintain or increase the rigor for our students. They were to limit overly broad standards by rewriting and renaming with clearer direction for teachers based on the functions and the systems contained in each course. They are to remove identified standards that span two to three courses and were viewed as duplicative. If you notice on that um, picture, a few slides ago, there were little sticky notes. This is Math 2. Those are all the standards contained in Math 2. If they had one color sticky note, 
they ran through all three courses, that particular standard. If they had a different color, they were in math one and three. Another color indicated they were in math two and three. So this has been very confusing to some of our teachers. Um, and I heard this loud and clear as a district leader as well. Very good standards, they need some work, but that, where do you start and stop when a standard spans three courses is difficult for every teacher to have the exact same picture across the state. So what the Data Review Committee said, as well as taking the advice of the Standards Review Commission, is that we need to limit those. And we need to make sure that we give very clear direction to teachers where to start and stop. So their vision is to not have standards anymore that span two to three courses and were viewed as duplicative. So there would be a renaming involved as well. Um, thoughts on testing. We'll work with Dr. Howard's group, Testing and Accountability, to review the drafts against our current forms of the Math 1 EOC, as well as Math 2 and 3 final exams. We're going to solicit feedback April 18th through the 26th. <laughs> I'll be coming back down here on the 13th to speak to the superintendents at the quarterly meeting to share this information. We've also given CNI leaders a preview of this so that they can begin to form feedback teams in their districts. We're going to provide a framework for the LEA uh, feedback just because it's going to be on a very aggressive timeline and we don't want to limit what they have to say about the standards, but we do need a way to organize that information as it comes back to the department. I will then bring you that feedback, <coughs> as well as the drafts, at our main meeting. And we are on track for that. It looks like we're going to be able to have a complete draft ready April 15th. Now our K-8, maybe I should stop right there for that. Okay. I am finishing up with the high school portion of this, and so I'd like to address any questions that you might have. It's a lot of information and dates that I, I just shared. I just think the timeline is incredibly aggressive uh, and knowing how much I am criticized mathematics, I applaud you for being aggressive, but at the same time, I think part of the problem that we encountered by adopting the standards previously is that, that we had lack of open, transparent, participatory process, and I think the aggressive timeline is going to create a challenge for that. It sounds like you have, you've recognized that and, and feedback from districts and feedback from, from people. I still am completely at loss with what it is that you're going to change and why you're going to change it. And between now and the time we vote on it, we bet I'm a pretty low math person. Uh, and I'd like to know what the heck is going on with respect to, to math. You know, one of the concerns that I've always had is what is math for? Uh, uh, because everywhere I go and talk to people, I can't get a consistent answer what we're doing with math for. Um, and I'm also would like to know things about how we're handling um, students with reading issues uh, with respect to mathematics. Um, they're, uh, they're, from looking at the test scores, it would appear that the math scores, which traditionally had been the gap, the achievement gap, was a lot narrower under the old standards. And they've gotten wider under these standards which I think is related to the amount of reading that goes on in, in the math one, two, and three. So I mean, those are kind of big highlight sure. questions or the kind of things that I'm looking for. I don't really can, can need to know when trig is going to be introduced. Uh, but I do want to know that, that the math that is being taught across the, uh, the curriculum is math that parents will understand, will appreciate, um, what's going on. That we're not having to have tutors for, for a simple, simple mathematic situation because, again, our parents are our first and best teachers. And so if they're not engaged in what we're doing, we're losing a, a real big process in that. And our, and our children who are, um, have a lot more um, difficulties uh, in high school have to be addressed a lot differently than the rest. And, and so those are the kind of things I'm looking for. And I'm hoping between now and the time we have the vote, those kind of questions are going to be answered. And they're not only answered to me, but for the folks who will be asking me what's going on. Um, 
I know that this is a very aggressive timeline, and one of the reasons is because of all the feedback that we have received about the need to change mathematics at the high school level. When we went through this process um, last time when these standards were adopted, it was really over a two-year period. So it is definitely an aggressive timeline. And we face the problem in, in mathematics in making sure that parents understand, especially at the high school level, because if we do not use math, then we tend to lose those math skills. So it would be very difficult, although it's very critical for our students to understand quadratic equations and how they're used in polynomials, and that sometimes it's very difficult to use that math language where it's understandable to us who have not taken mathematics courses in quite a while. But I think that uh, as we look at the clarity, then it really is important for our teachers to be able to translate what is being required. And I think of this as I just had to one of our elementary schools. And the teacher invites parents to come every first Thursday to, uh, to go over with her parents what is going to be taught. So it gives that teacher an opportunity to show in that particular case, how she is teaching area and perimeter, and then to help parents understand how that will be done. And that is, that at the elementary level, that's much easier than it is at the high school level because of the complexity of mathematics. So uh, we need feedback from you as to how we take a complex subject uh, such as a quadratic equation and turn it into something that is, I mean, the big idea is that we want mathematics to be used to solve problems. And, and so maybe that is a way that we uh, do that to help people solve problems. Um, and then the other challenge we have is that when we look at mathematics, especially at, at the high school level, it is very difficult because problems involving mathematics do not come in neat packages as I was taught in geometry. I had to uh, learn the, the Pagathera, the theorem. theorem, thank you very much, came to say it. But no one taught me how I would use that in real life. And so that's the challenge we have is to take a formula and turn it into something that a student can read a problem which, which would have words because our problems in life do not come with a formula. We have a problem with words we, and so we have to solve it. So there's some of the challenges we have, Mr. Collins, in being able to help parents and others understand. Uh, perhaps one of our uh, strategies can be when we get to parents is to say that your child is going to learn how to determine how much carpet is needed to uh, be I mean, to be used in this room without any waste and how much would it cost if you wasted if you did the wrong measurements whatever so I'm just using that as an example and I think that it would be helpful if you would share with them about the clarity about in the past when we talked about solving for one variable versus multiple variables and how the committee has looked at how you would have clarity related to that. Sure, so we would do that through courses with distinct start and stops for teachers and that's really surrounded around identifying which functions will be covered in each course. Um, that may be way in the weeds, beyond where you want to go, but that's really going to identify and drive how they're writing. So we haven't had that before. That is something that we've learned that we have to do for teachers, and that's one good thing about this review cycle, which we do every five years, and the idea of continuous improvement and growth allows us to do that. Um, Dr. Curtis, I, I was ask, how does this affect um, AP it will not have any effect in AP math. That has its own distinct curriculum and set of standards. So we are only reviewing the freshman, sophomore, um, and junior level courses that are traditionally known as math one, two, and three, but could be taken starting as early as seventh grade. Um, to address 
Mr. Collins, um, questions about the three, the aggressive timeline and keeping, I mean, I don't anticipate that we will stop soliciting public feedback when we bring the draft to you in May. I anticipate that all through May we will hear from parents and the public as well, and that this will be a very transparent community-wide discussion across our state. So this is not something where there's just that one window, and I apologize if I, if that came across in that way in my presentation. That was a window to gather very directed feedback from our LEAs before they get into the testing windows. So we wanted to make sure that we honor teachers' work and what they're doing in the classroom with students and that we had a very specific and prioritized timeline for our local education agencies. Um, and to address your question about reading and mathematics courses as it pertains to the Math 1 EOC, we are actually responding to that now with um, a Math 1 intervention course that is being jointly developed through VPS and curriculum instruction. So I work directly with um, and exceptional children and our MTSS group. So we've all come together in academic and digital learning for this uh, very large project to create a course where teachers will be able to connect with a virtual teacher as well and have a feedback continually to assist students who have difficulty with reading um, and to prepare them to better meet the standards in the math one course. We're very proud of that, and it's going to be piloted soon. In fact, we're visiting next week two potential districts, Cabarrus and Carter, I believe, who are going to pilot the course. And I, is that all your, is that all your question? There was a question about math. No, that's okay. Math. I, I don't okay. need those answers right now. Okay. You guys, I'm just suggesting that that's a, that if we're going to vote on this in June, is what I understand you're talking about, it's between now and June. Sure. For us to, to gather all this and get all the feedback, get all this information, and, 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 and again, I, I really want you to be successful because I really want want to see this improve. Um, uh, but uh, I just would appreciate it. at some point offline you mean giving me this. this kind of Absolutely. Thing. And it may be helpful to distribute the books uh, yes. that we received. Thus, I mean, where you have compiled all the comments because that would give. Uh, uh, a flavor of the thread of the revision. Sure, yes, common themes.